Welcome back to part two, the engineering. And just so you have an idea about how disproportionate my confidence was to my time frame, here's a rapid summary of what I was aspiring to make. It was a sort of glove that a patient puts on and which straps to the inside of their forearm. The glove then senses when they try to make a fist and amplifies their strength by pulling the fingers of the glove closed for them. What this does is it helps the brain associate the intention of making a fist with the movement, which leads to the motion being reinforced and the brain getting better and better at performing the motion, thus rehabilitation. A patient could also change the potency of the glove's assistance, so if they could only barely move their hand, the glove would step in early and do pretty much the entire movement for them. Or if they had 70% of their function, the glove could make up the rest, thus allowing it to be effective at any point in their rehabilitation. Also conjoined with this was an app to help the patient track their progress and understand their movement, all of which had to be wirelessly connected to the device, which itself was wireless since, well, they only have one arm. So how do you even approach something like this? Well, you start by breaking the project up into different systems. And for my case, I had a movement, sensing, control, power, and display system. Then you examine the different options for each system and justify why some are more sensible than others. For instance, a linear actuator would be better than a stepper motor because it's smaller, lighter, and requires less supporting hardware, and so forth. And once you've made all those decisions, you start to build. Or at least that's what you're meant to do. But the reality is that I knew exactly how I was going to build this thing before I had even written the literature review. And for the other students who had some experience building things, they also found an obvious and elegant solution straight away. But you do still have to placate the academics, so what you end up doing is merely writing off the other alternatives, most of which would never make any sense. I mean, thermoelectric generators to power a linear actuator capable of contracting an atrophied hand? Good one. Also, in my case, my options were heavily limited by cost. You know, I wanted to make this thing for less than $200 so that anyone could afford it, which really restricted what I could do and use. But this was actually a good thing because not only does it eliminate the need for you to examine a thousand different options for each system, but it meant that I could afford to build prototypes, as many as I wanted and without having a huge outlay each time. So yeah, I definitely recommend you make use of that limit in yours. Now, once I had settled on a final design and picked my hardware, I immediately began testing and proving a few of the unknowns so that I could identify any roadblocks ASAP. Because I knew that an Arduino would work as a control system, I knew LiPos made a good power source, I knew a force sensitive resistor placed inside the glove would work, but I'd never actually used a linear actuator before and I'd only ever dabbled in Bluetooth. So I bought a linear actuator, which was more than a broke student like me could afford, but luckily the uni paid for it. Then I plugged it in the wrong way around and fried it. So after replacing it out of my own pocket, I got it working pretty easily. So then I dived into the Bluetooth and got fisted relentlessly because back then there was no Bluetooth low energy you could easily use. And so I got stuck with some Bluetooth module, which was a nightmare. I must have spent a hundred hours just getting it to communicate the data I wanted and then figuring out how to interpret that data on the tablet PC end was also really fun, especially because I decided to use a Windows universal app so that in my final presentation, I could say the app is available on the largest PC platform and can be used on smartphones, tablets, laptops, or even desktop machines, which ended up being a mistake because unlike Android or iOS, there wasn't any abundant support for Windows apps back then, and especially not for using Bluetooth with them. And I came so close to giving up on it, but I managed to figure it out and created a fairly robust connection between the device and my tablet and the app looked straight and slick. But setting up the connection was like flipping a coin because for reasons unknown, sometimes it worked and sometimes it would simply not connect at all. And I wanted to spend more time perfecting it, but I had dynamics to do, so I just left it. And apart from that, from here on, it kind of ran smoothly and I had a working device. My report was progressing and the next big task was to prepare for my presentation, which was a 15 minute speech followed by five minutes of questions in front of other engineering students and faculty of all disciplines. 
And long story short, I winged the speech and it went really well and I answered all the questions and everyone was pretty interested. But to be fair, the other presentations were on the implications of flood overflows and the natural fauna of fucking who cares. But at the end of my speech, I said some fateful words. Do you want to see it work? And I knew that the Bluetooth more often than not did not connect. So I was probably going to be standing in front of everyone with a device that I just said worked only to fumble around for 10 minutes and walk off the stage disgraced and humiliated. But I got caught up in my confidence and as soon as I said those words, my heart sunk, but I set it up and it connected the first time and more easily and quickly than it ever did. And it all worked flawlessly and everyone was amazed by it. Needless to say, I acted like it connecting was commonplace and nothing special while internally elated and seizing from my good fortune. And that was it. One year, nearly 20,000 words, and one ruined actuator later, I was free. Anyway, next week will be something new. Until then.